gonna start it right here. This is Tia. There's a dog somewhere. Some very sad news before we started some organization. Wow! We got a label maker. So we'll feed them first. Do I want to do it? Just some salt water. That would help. Suck it up. Suck it up. Spit it out. Okay. I'm gonna start it right here. This looks like a good spot. What is going on? Reefing fan, March here. This is Fragbox TV. Welcome back to the channel. These are beautiful corals. This is Tia. There's a dog somewhere. This is Dylan. If you are new to the channel, what is this? This is a unscripted and unedited vlog that follows our wacky and ever-changing coral store here in lovely Toronto. What a beautiful coral. What are we doing today? I am in a spot feeding mood. Actually, I've been in a spot meeting. Spot blah blah blah. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Words are hard to use. I have been in a spot feeding mood for the last couple of weeks. What are you looking at? I see you smiling over there. No, I was looking at the first part. Digis. Oh yeah, they're nice. And why am I in a spot feeding mood? That is thanks to my friends at Tidal Gardens. They are always talking about spot feeding and the importance of coral nutrition. And I think it's something we kind of lack a little bit here in the store. Our water is usually very clean. So I want to get more into the feeding. Yeah, the phosphates are kind of high, and I think that's because I've been a little trigger happy with the food. I will link in the description the foods that we're using in today's video if you want to try them out. I'm going to use... Oh, you know what? Let's use this. I don't think I've ever done a video on this. For the anemones? For the anemones, yeah. We're going to use Vitalis. Uh, we're going to use... Where are you? Who organizes these shelves? Some LPS pellets and some Reefroids. Some very sad news before we start. Dylan cut his hair. Wah, wah. Why, Dylan? Tell us why. Uh, I like. It does look good, but okay. Where is our food missing? Hmm. Maybe someone did some organization. Wow. Who got a label maker? Look at this. Not a label maker. What's it called? Laminator. A laminator. I like organize. I like to find stuff. I don't like looking for shit. Ta-da! Let's feed this stuff. Our trusty feeding mug. What does it say on the front? And though she be but little, she is rich. Where the hell did we get that? And this, this is a very good tool. If you're looking for it, sales plug, we sell them. You can find them on our site. Chicka, 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 chicka. Very good for spot feeding. Tell me when you record. You recording? Yeah. Is it already started? It started. Okay. Step one, very crucial. You want to carefully measure like this, very scientifically. <laughs> do as I say, don't do as I do. Let's use a lot of it. Actually, that's quite we have a, a bit. huge. We've got a lot so. to feed, yeah. And what I like to do is feed the fish first, because some fish like the taste of this, and they will go and take it out of the mouth of the coral, and also feed your shrimp. shrimps. Yeah. Peter shrimp, blood shrimp, coral meta shrimp, uh, sexy, shrimp. sexy shrimp. They're bad, actually. Sexy. Yeah, any shrimp. They're, real, they're, they're scavengers. So feed them first so that they F off. Okay, I'm going to turn off the flow, otherwise we're going to waste half the food. Trusty Apex. Boom, one button. All the flow in the store turns off for 10 minutes. And you know what I'm going to do? One more thing. So I mix water into here. Just some salt water. But what See? I Suck it up. Suck it up. Spit it out. Okay. What I'd like to do is throw in some of this. My homemade. I'm giving you my trade secrets. Don't tell anyone. Ever heard of this food? It's great. It's been around 20 years. And you might not know, does it say? Made in, oh, what's that right there? Canada, you don't say. <laughs> I'm also made in Canada. My friend Phil, who runs Pollock Lab, um, he does not sponsor us, even though he probably should. I think he should, should, yeah. He should be getting paid for this shit. It's just, it's a great all around food. I like Reefroids for broadcast feeding. What does that mean? If you're lazy and you don't have time to do this, grab Reefroids. And this is what I call broadcast feeding. The corals are going to get it. You just throw it in the water column. <laughs> it's really fine and powdery. It looks like a... I feel like I would only recommend that for larger tanks. Yeah. Don't yeah. do what I'm doing on a Fluval Evo or on a 10 gallon. Or if you do, do literally like... One little... Just, yeah. Just, you don't need a lot. But this is a huge system and what you don't see here is like this is a 90 gallon and the basement ties into a larger like 300 gallon system. So that is quite a bit of food. Let's say you have one of these nice little tanks. You would do like, hmm, hmm. That, is that enough? That's too much. too much, yeah. Yeah, maybe already too much. You want, I would say quarter teaspoon. 
quarter teaspoon for every 10 gallons. And you quarter can, teaspoon? Quarter teaspoon. That's a lot. Quarter I don't teaspoon. know. Read wait, the instructions. Wait. How big do you think a teaspoon is? It, not that big. It's a smaller measurement, but... For every 100 gallons of tank volume, you mix one teaspoon. Oh. Yeah. So, so I you say need... quarter teaspoon. So a quarter teaspoon is 25 gallons. Yeah. So that's like a quarter of a quarter of a teaspoon. Not a lot. That's why I like this stuff. Because I feel like we don't waste as much food. Because as I'm going to show you now in a second, we put it right inside the mouth of the coral. So suck some of this up. I'm going to start with Duncan's because they're my favorite to feed. And with a little bit of precision, you can drop one pellet in each. Now, if I were to spot feed everything here, it would take... Six years. No, maybe five. Bloom. So they're reacting to the reefroids, but as well as to the pellets. And this is really good for LPS. It doesn't work as well for softies. The pellets. The pellets, yeah. yeah. But um, you can feed anything, really. Like, favias, they don't look like they would eat, but I'm going to come back to this coral and maybe five minutes right at the end of the video if you're still watching by then i will say thank you and that means that you actually like our content so yeah favia they don't look like they would eat but you're gonna watch we're gonna come back to this guy and you'll be very surprised because they're like an lps coral but they have a hard skeleton oh let's feed these these are probably the most fun these are the ones we start the video on so here we have some really nice acanthophilias i don't know why they're all bunched on top of each other we have enough room here, but... If they keep moving a little, inch by inch. So I'm gonna give them maybe, oh, a couple pellets each. Recording. Recording. Yeah, just, just double checking. So if you overfeed, they'll literally spit it out. They say, oh, that's enough food. Kind of like people. This is basically an all-you-can-eat buffet. And it's really cool, because right here, right in the middle, you can watch, they're going to open their mouth out. And a lot of corals you can feed at night. So LPS corals, they open up some of them will open up even more in the evening. Euphilias, like torches, hammers, and frog spawns are gonna close in the evening, so you're gonna wanna feed them while the lights are on. But certain acans, certain favias, goniastrias, lobophilias, if you ever look at your tank at night with a flashlight, um, you'll notice that some of them get really, really active at night. So you can kind of experimenting, feeding both daytime and nighttime, and you're gonna get improved color and improved growth. That's it's something of, on it. Yeah, I'm trying to grab them. They're getting kind of clumped together. I don't think I'm using enough water. So, it's something I've known for a long time, feeding. Muy importante. But we get busy here in the store, and it's not on my checklist. It's just something I do sort of when I feel like it. But it's now on our task board, so it means it's going to be happening a lot more in the store. Oh, that's so cool. You can really see the torch reacting and grabbing the food almost each individual uh, individual tentacle nom 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 here's some hammer we can feed these guys too again feed sparingly if you're going to use the roids um, if you're using the lps pellets it's a lot more direct a cans are a lot of fun to feed they too they are yeah. this one's great and i forgot to do the comment of the day so i will do that right now pause this is the comment. Wait. Oh, feed me? Okay. Yeah, whatever. T is the director today. Mom, mom, mom. Oh, I like this one. Okay, comment of the day. It's going to you. You made me laugh here. Mr. Eric Fitzgerald, the audio cutout was like being inside March's head. Two conversations at once. I don't know why. This one really got me. Thumbs up. That's their comment of the video. Well then. Are we recording? Yes. So, for corals that aren't doing terribly well, like this lobophilia, you kind of see the skeleton is exposed here. A light feeding can often help it recover. You don't want to give it too much. You don't want to stress it out with like trying to eat while he's not doing so well. It's good uh, to put them in like really low light too. Low for light, Lobos. low flow. I'm going to give some over here to this Blasto. You get some love. And then sometimes if I want to do like a pretty quick feeding and we don't have too much time at the end of the day to sit here, I'll do this. Kind of fill it up. And I'll do like a drive-by. Just and just kind of feed them all in one shot. <laughs> Now, many times I say in the video, 
do as I say, don't do as I do. So don't drive by, feed your corals. Unless you happen to have a massive, massive tank. I'm wasting a lot of food there. You're, if you're gonna do it, really take the time. And um, this is Elegance Coral here, loves to eat. All these little tentacles, they have multiple mouths on Elegance. There's different points you can feed them. Like um, some corals are gonna have one mouth, like this over here, this um, Cinerium. It's really only one spot it's gonna eat is right there in the middle. The same goes for Open Brain, the Trachephilia Joffrey. But pieces like Chalice or Acans, depending on which one, they're gonna have multiple mouths. Uh, plate Coral, usually one mouth. Sometimes you'll find one with two. They're kind of splitting, very rare cases. Duncan. like the really long plates too. But I forgot what they're called. Caliophongia something, something, something. So it depends on the coral. Oh, this lobo here, multiple mouths actually. One, that's an example of a healthy pink lobo, not like the, um, the one I just showed you. And this is the clownfish that hosts everything that doesn't have a name but deserves one. You should yeah. name him. That's a YouTube. Yeah, we get offered to buy him all the time. Maybe you guys want to name him. He hosts literally everything. This sells? Oh, I'll just host this. And if that sells, I'll just host <laughs> this. He really doesn't care. No. He'll host just about everything. Spot feeding is good for, I mean, not spot feeding, reefroids. I think it was originally developed to feed flower pot, if I'm not mistaken. So if you're having trouble keeping Ganipora, Albiapora, any of the Aporas, can try doing this. Maybe it's lacking a little bit of food. They are photosynthetic. When I feed flower pot, I like to put it where the flow is going to take it through the polyps and not like shoot any directly at it. Not like I'm doing right now. Yeah. It, it went, and it won't do like large chunks either. Yeah. It's only going to want to be fed the reefroids, not the vitalis. There are other good coral foods out there. We don't carry it anymore, but uh, Fauna makes some good ones. Mm -hmm. I think it's called LPS Power or Pellet. We used to get one from Aqua Forest, but um, we have weird restrictions here with food and stuff. We can't actually get them in Canada. This is some Symphilia. This is November 25th. What day is it today? No idea. I think it's 25th. So anything you see right now in the store, in this video, is currently available. So if there's something like this nice purple yellow Lobo. <laughs> yeah, maybe. this one's really nice. Very, very nice. And they're gonna close after eating for a couple hours. So if you do try this for the first time, don't be alarmed if they look um, sort of closed or recessed in. Uh, yeah, this one is usually, I find it's the most surprising because it just doesn't look like it would consume anything. It looks almost like a colorful Montipora, but it really will take in quite a lot. Zoas, mm, they don't really react to this food. There's another food that you can use. It's, um, what did I used to use? It's called, it was called Coral Dust, but I think they rebranded it. That's also mm. from oh, Tropic here. Marin, yeah. but I think they gave it a different name. Oh yeah, get out of here. I love this This fish. one eats. Ah, messing up my coral feeding video, bro. <laughs> I just actually added a new sail fin in that tank. How's he doing? Oh, amazing. So we're having a little bit of an ulva issue here with some algae. These loser fish didn't want to eat it. We added today this new large sail fin. He was going to town on it and all the other fish that weren't touching it, like, oh, what are you doing, man? They just like completely <laughs> followed him and now they're all eating the algae. They just needed to learn from one. Like, <laughs> I couldn't be happier with that fish. Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, really, really good purchase. I ended up picking up four in total. Just we need a little bit of extra algae control and sail fins are really good all around algae eaters. Not crazy aggressive. I don't think you can put more than one in a tank unless you get lucky and put the young. Let's try, oh, let's go back to the other side and see how that first piece was. And I think you're gonna see a nice sort of feeding reaction. Hopefully. In a few minutes, there he is. You can see all the food got stuck right into the mouth of each individual head of Favia. Actually, we call it Favia. I think it's Ganiastria. Are you using the filter? Yeah. Oh, it looks pretty orange. That's good. You can feed Hollywood Stunner Chalice. I, that stuff grows so fast, don't waste food on it. You're right. You know what? Yeah. I'm not going to feed it. Acans really like getting fed. Like, you feed them two or three times, you notice huge, just real, real puffiness. It's mm -hmm. really going to stick out. Blastos don't grow unless you feed them. Like, <laughs> that's the key to blastos is so? to feed them. Yeah. I've never tried feeding cup coral. I wonder what would happen. Oh, I think it's like little Duncans. Like, they're very reactive. They I've never taken the time. This would probably go better with the float off. 
I wonder if they'll eat these for sure. Aiken Lords, Aiken Lords, oh my lord. I changed it. No, I'm not changing the name, sorry. Guys, whatever the name is, when I learned it, that's it. <laughs> that's but not how science works. That's how my brain works. <laughs> I have enough trouble trying to remember the name in the first place, and then, oh, that's a lot of food. <laughs> oh, these corals are gonna be so happy tomorrow. The crumbits are gonna eat it. I wonder if they feel like shit after. Kind of like, you ever go to all-you-can-eat buffet uh, and you leave hating yourself? <laughs> you think the corals are like... I don't, I don't think they feel that. I think they're happy to get food. Like, solid food. <laughs> that's about it. You should go on the other side and show how nice the cyanarians are. Okay. Such a cool reaction. And you don't really have to worry about overfeeding. They're gonna spit it out. Look at the mouth on this one here. Just, you can see right into the center of the coral. Just pulls it all in. We should do a time lapse one day because it's really neat. This guy, mm -hmm. they don't really need any more, but I love watching the meat. And again, improved color for sure, improved growth. If you got a small tank and you're not looking to have your corals grow anymore, maybe don't feed them. Oh, look at the A-can. Check out the response on this one here. Really, really hungry, even here. I'm gonna post again in the bottom. A link to this food if you want to try it. If you want your corals to look good and you want them to love you, you have to love them. So we get what we give in this life. So I'm giving love, and then they're gonna say, Oh, March, we love you, man. Look how great we look. Lobos, hammers, really anything. Anything else we should feed? I think that's it. <laughs> ah, we'll wrap it up. Oh, one more. I'll end it with this Dragon Soul Fabio. I'm gonna feed this guy. And then I will say au revoir, Reefing Fam, and thank you for tuning in to today's episode with Tia as our director. We will be back here soon. I'm trying to do videos as often as we can. I hope you noticed that. It's tricky. I'm trying to run, you know, what I think is the coolest reef store in Canada. Uh, ship hundreds of orders a week. Make sure corals stay alive. Feed them. Clean them. Manage people. And then come out with a new company that sells aquariums, sell them globally, and make YouTube videos. But good to stay busy, keeps us out of trouble. We'll see you guys back here soon. Have a nice day or afternoon or morning, wherever you're watching from. Au revoir.